work in AI in the late 1980s and early 1990s. And at that time, we were wondering that you know what's the point of learning all this? Uh, it's all theoretical, you know. I mean, these neural. I mean, there was also a subject area called neural networks, and we all thought that you know this is all nothing but uh, you know theoretical interest. You know, you can get PhD if you want to. But now you can see that it has become a reality, and the reason it has become reality is that it has now. started to be you know it has got the advantage of computing power what we didn't have at that time was computing power so when you start learning about ai the first example is given as like you know classification of images like you know whether this is a dog or a cat and you know people say that you know you point your camera at an animal and ask you know i mean i hope it is either a dog or a cat and you know camera through your artificial intelligence program you know should be able to figure out you are pointing to a dog or you are pointing to a cat this has become viable only because computing power has become cheap and fast see the solution has no meaning if you ask someone whether it's a cat or a dog and if it gives you answer after one hour you know because then the time is gone or you know if you have to lug around a uh, server size uh, thing you know around with you that also is like you know not a viable solution it's not going to be a commercial success it has become success now because you know you can see something like a form factor of this mobile phone you know it can easily slide into your pocket it's always with you and it has got tremendous amount of computing power so that's why the dream of ai has become a reality mainly because of course other things were done the idea of neural network has been around since the 60s but it has come to reality or a fruition only because of advent of abundant processing power at low power envelope and low cost so please remember this so whatever we discuss you know is going to be based on this now there is now a relentless hunger for power as you say the space shuttle used to have 500 uh, 1000 lines of code and now your top segment bmw car has got millions of lines of code and the so is true for everything but memory power everything has become abundant so now we can make use of it so before we jumping into uh, the a topic of edge computing we need to figure out the main uh, actors or the main actor who is playing the role of uh, a guiding force in any edge device and that is your processor now your processor are like three types of architectures are dominating at the moment arm architecture has always been around you know it has always been known as for embedded uh, processor and now you know it is rightful uh, air to any kind of uh, edge computing device the new advent is risc5 and people have started using risc5 because it is open source 